Who's going to stand for Jesus? I ask you, I ask, who's going to stand for Jesus? You know what? I was thinking the other day. The church world's getting so modern. They're getting so Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid. I'm fearful. I am fearful for multitudes in the church today. It ain't no wonder that Paul said, I fear lest I be a castaway. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something. When they put you on the scales against men like Paul, I wonder how high we'll come up on the chart. Can I preach a few minutes? When they take you, oh God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. When they take you and place you on that chart and put you on the scale, it's going to be hard to balance the scales against the life of a man named Simon Peter. Most of us can't stand somebody just talking about us a little bit. Here was a man that went to a cross upside down, crucified. Died with his tongue hanging out of his mouth. The same tongue that spoke on the day of Pentecost had the keys of the kingdom of heaven. When they put us on the scales, I want your attention. When they put us on the scales of, of measurement against men like Paul, I wonder how many of us would really measure up. Somebody could just throw one little stone at us and we're ready to fight them. And here will be Paul on the other side of the scale. Are you with me? With his little old back bare and beaten to the bone and striped. When they put the men I'll tell you one thing it'll make you keep the conversation holy because you sure didn't hear them telling dirty jokes got a cold way but that heat feels good right on top of it We're in trouble. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a few, there's a chosen people that's moving out of this crazy system into the anointing. And as for me, I'm going. Glory to God. As for me, I'm willing. Hallelujah. When they put us on the scale, brother, as sure as God is God, the handwriting's on the wall. I preached a message some time ago that God would recount his worthies. God's not just going to count them, he's going to count them again. He'll recount. Only the ones in the recount's going to make it. The most important thing that can happen to you is to make sure that you are there in the recount. We're living in a world today where nothing's a sin. Holiness is made fun of. You live right. I preached to maybe some of you not long ago. You don't have to do anything wrong to fight a battle in this world. Just do something right. Some of you that have lived for God and fought, you're fighting battles and the powers of hell coming against you. And you wonder, well, my God, if, if, if we got so much of God, then why are we fighting battles? I'll tell you one thing. If you live godly, you'll suffer persecution. And the devil's going to come against you and try to run you down. But wait a minute. It's going to be worth every tear that you cried. It's going to be worth every day that you fasted. It's going to be worth everything that you go through when you behold the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Say amen, somebody.
Well, then some of you going to get mad at me tonight. I can't help it. The Bible teaches that concerning the last days that people would not endure a solid doctrine, a sound doctrine. Amen. Won't endure it. The looser, the looser a preacher lets you live, the less he loves. A preacher that lets you walk headlong into hell and just kind of shoves you along because you give tithes and offerings is a preacher don't love you. His first love is money. Are you with me? Jesus said, you hear me? I can't help it. I can't get away from this. God's been speaking to me. I've been seeking God today. Jesus said that the queen of the south is going to rise in the judgment against this generation because she came to hear the, the, the words of wisdom of Solomon. And he said, Behold, the greater than Solomon's here. I tell you that if God lets this adulterous generation go. He will have to grub up the ashes of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize openly before the billions of people in this world. If he lets it go, it's not going to get by. I want you to know there's people in these valleys that thinks everything's all right, but brother, we are headed on a head-on collision course with our destinies, and Jesus is coming to tread the wine press of the wrath of Almighty God. And if you're not saved, if you're not His, you're in trouble tonight. I walked down the street. And I watched people look at me and smile and make fun of me. They say, look at him. His little black suit. On television, talking in tongues and preaching. But I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather walk down the streets, son, with a black suit on and a Bible under my arm and love Jesus than to be one second late. Whew, when the king comes, are you listen to me? I feel God all over me. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to say some things tonight. Some of you better hear me, and I mean every one of you better hear me. And the young folks in the balcony quit you talking and listen. I didn't come to man to play church. I don't feel like playing church. Got people all over this nation, Canada, South America, Central America, Haiti. I got letters begging me to begging me to come. I'm doing my very best to wake up people. Brother Cook, they got to wake up. My God, I've pinched them. I've slapped them in the face. I've done everything I know. I've preached hard, and yet seem like they just fall back asleep. God, have mercy upon this generation. God is not going to judge. You hear me now? God is not going to judge you according to the standards that this new church world is preaching. God is not going to judge you according to the bylaws and the rules of the church of God. God is not going to judge you according to the bylaws and the principles and the rules of my personal doctrine of R.A. West. God is not going to judge you according to the bylaws and the rules of the Baptist or the Church of Christ or the Methodist or the Catholic. But when you step on that judgment, to a, a place of judgment and on those scales of judgment, he's going to lay the word of God up there and you'll be judged according to the writings of that book. And brother, if you aren't washed in the blood of the Lamb, if Jesus ain't in your heart and you're not called by his name, my friend, you're going to fall short. Have the glory of God. Mm. 
merciful God. What's going to happen to people? What's going to happen to these Nashville stars and these Hollywood stars that are going to church on Sunday living like the devil on Monday through Saturday when they step on that judgment scale? after they put millions of dollars into false ministries that scratch their itching ears and tickle them under the chin and holler, coochie, coochie, coo. What's going to happen to this crazy... Yeah, i tell you what's going to happen. Brother, in the flames of hell, I preached up in, uh, I believe it was Del Marva Convention Center. I wouldn't want to be a preacher in the flames of hell. My God Almighty, I'd rather be an alcoholic. I'd rather be a drug addict, but not a preacher in the flames of hell because people are going to hunt me down that I lied to and wouldn't tell them the truth. Say amen. Cold in here. Before I came in here, I saw in the spirit, I saw a set of scales, and I saw the handwriting on the wall. The other day, just here a few weeks ago in Point Pleasant, I saw blood. I saw people's names written on a wall, and I saw blood coming down that wall. Now I gave an altar call, 150 people or more hit the altar. Brother, I tell you, it is not time to play church. I don't believe Bobby Pruitt's over here just to, for his health. Crowds may fall off on you some, but I'll tell you one thing. God will honor a man that'll stand for the truth amen. and preach the truth, say amen. amen. I wonder. You know, if, if you're going to take a man like myself or somebody like you, judge us according to the standards of this world, of this present church system, then we'll make it fine. I'm quiet in here. We'll make it fine. But it's not the standards of this present, new, fangled, modernistic, church religious world that God's going to judge us by. It's the sayings of that book. And his judgments are true. I was preaching on the gifts of the Spirit over the weekend. If I had faith to move mountains and don't have charity and love, it prompts me nothing. If I give my body to be burned, give all I've got and still don't have charity, and I'm nothing. Say amen. Listen, my friend. There's going to be a judgment. I, I, I'd like to be able to tell this world that God will have mercy and look over these things. But how's he going to do it and not look over Sodom and Gomorrah? After all, he's a just God. Come on. He loves to save, he loves to heal, and he loves to deliver. But it's got to be according to his word. Say amen. When they put us as men, you hear me? I'm talking to the men. When they put us as men, as men, up against the lives of Moses, Elijah, Daniel, I tell you, I stand here trembling, and I feel God's spirit all over me. I feel chills up and down my spine. I tell you, there's some moving up to do. Say amen, somebody. All right, ladies. We're living in a world of modernistic things, many, many things. But I want to tell you something. in accordance to this world today, in the standard of the world today, you may come out on top. But I want to ask you something. What's going to happen when they put you next to Mary?
how high on the scale would you would you rate to a woman who got down on her little hands and knees and her hair so long that she could dry Jesus' feet, wash him with tears, and dry his feet with her hair. God's been speaking to me. I'm, I'm not getting too many amens now. But wait till the scales is put up. There's going to be some weeping and wailing, some crying. There's going to be people screaming in the judgment. Why didn't you tell me? I took your word for it, preacher. God, give me another chance. You say, I gave you a chance. Never take a preacher's word, my friend, unless it's God's word. Amen. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. What, about, what about people? Where do we, where do we rate? Where, where do we rate girls with people like the woman that came to the well? As soon as she encountered the master, her life changed. She never went home to her sin. She forsook it. She went to the town with her message. It didn't matter how many laughed or made fun of her. She forgot about it all and went to tell the truth. She left that city a liar. She left that city a liar and a cheat and a harlot she came back with a message I'll tell you on the scales where do we rate please listen to me where do we rate on the scales where do we rate I don't think that a man I don't think that I have the capacity, and I don't think I have the wisdom, I don't think I have the knowledge to even find the words to tell you what this judgment's going to be like. It'll be the most pitiful thing that you've ever experienced. It'll be where the secrets of all hearts will be revealed. It's where everybody's going to know the real genuine you. It's going to be a sad awakening for millions of people all over America when they find the man that stood behind the holy desk in his long, pretty black robe was a wolf in sheep's clothing. And the wolf fell in the ditch, and the Bible can't lie. If the blind lead the blind, they'll all fall into the ditch. There ain't no way in this world that we might as well draw the line. We go, and, and I've had people call me and tell me, even people, from, we had nine pe pe people from nine states at the tabernacle over the weekend that said, I never heard such things in my life. Just simply down, right down on the basic foundation and preaching and teaching. Where do we rate on the scale? Where in this world are we going to appear? You listening to me? What happened to the faith that was once not twice, once, delivered to the saints. What happened to it? Where in the world, how are we going to balance the scales against people like Mary Magdalene, out of whom Jesus cast seven devils, and from the moment she was free, she never stopped running for him. Come on. What about, what about Paul, who spent most of his life practically deteriorating and decaying and rotting in a, in a jail cell somewhere just because he fell in love with Jesus? Where in this world? My friend, I tell you of a truth, that walking down this road, there's many stones that are being thrown. And if you walk with Jesus, a few of them's bound to hit you. They're not throwing them at you. They're throwing them at the God that's in you. You might as well face it. The devil don't like 
at what you're doing. He don't like what you're born of. He hates the very ground you walk on. If you're full of the Spirit of God, say amen, somebody. I tell you, where do we rate? Where do we measure up? Where do we appear? Where in this world, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? So help me, God. Somebody asked me the other day, he said, just how long do you think we've got, Brother West? Just how long do you think we've got? I said, well, it, it's according to some of the turns uh, or some of the events that's taking place in the Middle East. I'm watching, I'm watching Mr. Gaddafi like a hawk. I'm watching Libya and I'm watching Iran and I'm watching Israel. I'm watching Russia. I'm watching Poland. I'm watching the Pope. Today God spoke to me about ministering spirits flying through the midst of heaven. You listen? Where in the world do we rate? Where do we where do we measure up? Where what, how high on the scale do we go? Where in the name of God, what in the, what in the name of God is going to happen to these little old people that are, that are falling into this? You're not going to like me. I told you you wouldn't. That are falling into this religious snare. that are just running around and I know faith is important. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But I'm going to tell you something. You can run around all you want to, holler all you want to, all the faith in the world may be in your life, you may think. But if, you're, if, you, if you don't have any works with it, you're dead. That's what, that's what James said. Faith without works is dead and works without faith is dead. Say amen, somebody. People, people are, are, are stand up making their confession or profession of faith and then falling short again. You listen, many of them are twice dead, plucked up by the roots. They don't draw from the sap. They don't understand what's going on. They don't, they don't really know what's going on. It's pitiful. And, and we don't have, and I preached this other night, we, uh, Fords and, and Chevrolets and Cadillacs and Volkswagens are not the only things coming off the assembly line. Program preachers has got a message. And I mean they're so persuaded. A man told me the other night that, and I believe that we were pre-known and pre-ordained, and I believe we were pre, uh, in predestination. I believe God knew us, but I don't believe he said, I'm going to make you to go to hell and you to go to heaven and you to go to hell. I don't believe he did that. I believe he knew in his mind the power that he possessed. I believe he knew who'd say yes and who'd say no. Say amen, somebody. I believe he knew that, but I, I, I told some other night, I said a lot of people's using this thing to, to hide their sin. Praise God. In other words, I'm either saved or lost. It don't make no difference. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Don't tell me that, brother. You got a lot to do with it. Say amen, somebody. Jesus said, if you'll come to me, I'll in no life cast you out. Say amen, somebody. You got a lot to do with it. Praise God. You got a lot to do with being born again. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Got to be born. You got to come to that place. Got to come to that acceptance. Praise God. You got to accept him the way he is. You got to walk with him the way he wants to walk. Say amen, somebody. It took Jesus three and a half years to get Peter and them just, just to get them prepared for Pentecost. Say amen. When the Spirit... Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions. All right. And the house of Jacob, their sins. Wouldn't it be something? Wouldn't it be something to belong to a church shake the preacher's hand every Sunday sign the book Pay your tithe and still be doomed. Do you know what? Some of you ain't going to like me no more after I get through saying what I'm going to say. But I found the ones 
that are the most against me are not in saloons and they're not in honky tonks. The ones that turn my spirit the coldest and cause me to fight the hardest battles are sitting in religious forums tonight. Can I preach a few more minutes? God spoke to me the other day and said, what if? I said, what if what? He said, tell the people what if. I said, what if what? People today go along and they say, well, I don't believe it's wrong. I don't believe that's wrong. But God spoke to me and said, when they get to the judgment, what if it's wrong? Oh, God. What if I preached thousands of messages? And what if some of you sitting here tonight have heard me and I've instructed you and taught you? And what if when I'm not around, it's not a sin? If it's, a, if it's not a sin, then why, when I come walking into the picture, why do you put it away? What Eba Sata? What if I wish somebody could feel what I feel all over me? And I'm reaching so, so far down into the flames tonight. I'm reaching so far down into the quicksand that it's not funny. What if? Agent? As you stood there looking at that Babylonian garment, and that sliver of silver and those articles that you buried in your tent, did you say in your mind, well, what if nobody knows? The most pitiful thing, one of the most pitiful stories in the Word of God unfolds as a man named Achim. stands and watches him kill his wife and kill his children, burn his cattle and all of his goods and everything he had over what if. What if they'd have never found out he'd have been fine, but God knew. I saw people, and I'm going to say this, even in my own family, distantly related but still somewhere related at a distance they have sat around all of their life religiously and I'm saying this because I know it's true now their children have grown up and they can't understand why they've gone bad They can't understand what happened, what went wrong. You listen to me? And the very things that they've been taught all of their life from the Word of God not to do, they do it every day. And the Bible said God is not mocked. You hear me? God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Please listen to me. I've seen people, and it's getting colder in here all the time, but the truth will make us free. I've seen people that didn't know what they were doing, just little old things, just maybe a little old habit, just some little old something they were doing, they knew it was wrong. It didn't matter how long, how hard they tried to convince themselves and everybody around them, it was all right. They knew it was wrong. The thing that's so dangerous and so hurtful 
is those little fellas falling behind you. It's a dangerous thing to come home from church and have a cussing brawl at the house. Because your children are going to follow you. They're going to do their very best to be like their daddy and mommy. Are you listening to me? The pitiful thing, pitiful thing, when we're standing in the judgment, and we'll be there. And a mother and a daddy lands in the very flames of hell, and their children right on their heels, knowing that they could have changed it all. Somebody said, oh, I don't believe it, Brother West, because, you know, God knows if you're going to be saved or lost. Well, I, I suppose that he knows, but I'll tell you this much Jesus said. Jesus said, if you come to me, I'll know I'll cast you out. The Bible does not teach that he came to save the saved. I asked a man the other night, I said, you telling me that you believe Jesus came to save that which was already saved? He said, sure he did. I said, you're wrong. Jesus came to save that which was lost. And here's the pitiful thing. Have you ever been caught up in something? Get by for a while and get caught up in it? A lot of people are going to get caught up in the judgment. It'll be too late then. My God, what if, what if it's wrong? Look, I'd rather walk down the streets of Logan and Mann and Williamson and let people point a finger and say, look at him, look at the old fogey. And get there and find that I was all right. Than to compromise with this world. Oh, I feel God all over me. And stand in the judgment. Concerned about what if. What if. You see, there's a difference. You go to school for 12 years. In high school, you graduate. You can sit and look at a paper and act like you're studying it, but when the test comes, they'll find out. Who knows? You can sit around. I used to do it in school. I know what I'm talking about. I used to sit in school and daydream. And I'd act like I'd look at the teacher, and every time I'd see her eyes start to look at me, I'd act like I was reading. But when the test came, it told on me. See? It'll, it'll tell. The Bible said, be sure your sins will find you out. Say amen. What are you saying, Brother West? I'm saying that we're living in a time of discouragement for sure. But listen to me, neighbor. You're not the only one fighting. We're living in a time when people are depressed and fighting these spirits of depression. And you're living in the time when the, when the devil is out to wear out the saints of the Most High. Some of you don't understand, but you get up in the morning, you'll know what I'm saying is true. Your feet hits the floor, you're tired. In a, in a nation where, where men have got cars to ride to work instead of mules. In a nation where women's got dishwashers and running water instead of a hand pump. A man and an old, and an old scrub board to wash clothes on. Where women used to work, and you know yourself, you can start early in the morning and work till late in the evening. You can't get half done what mama used to do. The days are short, and I feel God all over me. And you get up tired. I'll tell you why. It's because there's spirits against you. Powers of darkness, the powers of hell. The more you move in, you're not going to like it. The more you move into that, that spirit world of, of the flesh, that, that world that the flesh enjoys, oh God, that spirit realm that the flesh loves to get into, the less battles you're going to fight, 
But the more you step into the anointing of God, the more you step into God's presence of the holiness of God's spirit, the harder you're going to fight. Say amen because the devil don't want you to have what God says you can have. Say amen. Somebody, I feel God all over me. It's a battle from the time you get up till the time you go to bed. You're wrestling against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. But brother, keep the sword in your hand and the shield of faith in front of you and march out in the name of Jesus and keep up that bloodstained banner of victory before this world is filled with sin and corruption. Say amen. Who's going to stand for Jesus today? Sure, Brother Pruitt, that woman at the well stood beside of Jesus out there. Sure, when he first met her, she was literally a town harlot. But, Brother, when she hit the city limits sign, she wasn't a harlot again. Praise God, I'm telling you, she was changed. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Sure, sure. The woman taken, caught in the very act of adultery. When they brought her to Jesus, she was a wretch. But boys, when she left, she wasn't. She was changed. Say amen, somebody. Say amen. I think I heard Brother Cook talking about Brother Swaggart. Even though we don't agree exactly in doctrine. That man is reaching a people in the Hollywood realm and the Nashville realm that I'd never reach. And don't you never tell me he's not telling them what their sins are. He's telling them you can't drink a nightcap and be saved. He's telling them you can't dance in a nightclub and be saved. Come on, neighbor, and say amen. Oh, I hear that voice is speaking. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Cry aloud and spare not. Why, preacher? Because Jesus is surely coming for a people that's washed in the blood of the Lamb and set free by the power of the living God. Somebody give Jesus a hand clap to the Lord. A great big cheer. Don't you be caught in that web. Don't you get caught in that snare. Well, others are doing it. Why can't I? I'll tell you why you can't. Because you're children of a king. You belong to the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he expects you to hold up that high standard. Oh, the world says it's a low standard. God says it's a high standard. Come on, neighbor, and say amen. And I'm proud to be part of that high standard. God's getting ready to take these things off the daughters of Zion. God's getting ready to take the filthy jokes out of the mouth of the leaders of the church. And rest assured, my friend, I speak here in the name of Jesus. If you won't do it, God will move somebody in there that will. Say amen. Say amen. If I won't go, somebody will. If my boys won't, and they do live right, if my boys wouldn't live right, somebody'd come and go and live right. If one stops, there'll be another and come along. Say amen. God's work, God's word will never come back empty. It's always full. Say amen, somebody. Another thing. Don't fall into the snare of this religious world that's constantly hammering Jesus' name down. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Because I don't think you can look high enough to find his name. It's higher than the heavens. I don't think there's a man on earth can reach high enough to pull him down. His throne is high, holy, and exalted. He's not just a king. He is the king of kings. 
and the Lord of Lords. Somebody praise God. I feel his power all over me. I feel his anointing all through me. What if? All right, some of you have walked right down through town. And you've heard people snigger and grin and laugh behind you. I wonder where they go to church. Because you look halfway decent. Hold your head up that much higher. Because I'm going to tell you something, my friend. The standard of this world is not the standard God put out here. And believe me, if you got if you got to have a passing grade to get in, you're going to have to be in that category somewhere. I want to be one of them, don't you? I've got to make it. I've got to make it. I've got to make it. Do you think that I would want to sacrifice my life? And I want to tell you the truth. I have lost my life. I don't even have a life anymore for my own self, hardly. I'm telling you that God's truth. You think I want to sacrifice my life and, and wind up in the judgment? Going down the life's road thinking, well, what if? But I'm going to tell you something. You may not like me for what I'm going to say. But when that prophet came into town or into the camp and heard the bleeding of the sheep, I hear the sheep bleeding. I hear the cries of multitudes of people that are starving to death. People call me and they beg me. They say, would you just please come, just please one night, every two or three or four months, please, just one night. Our children are going to hell. You believe I'm telling you the truth? Brother West, they say you can come for just one night and seem like for two or three months they try to straighten up. Will you please come? We're living in a, an ungodly time. We're living in a time when, when everything in this world is permitted that God's Word speaks against. Say Amen. My friend, God's Word, oh, we, we know He's a loving, kind, and gentle, and understanding shepherd. But my friend, when one comes and toes the mark, another's got to toe the mark. Say amen. If God didn't do that, He wouldn't be a just God. If God lets one live loose as a goose and another has to live upright before God and follow the Word, then He wouldn't be a just God if He didn't make some kind of adjustment. Come on, I'm preaching the truth to you. What if? Somebody said, well, what if God ain't got no scale like that? Well, what if he has? Amen. You know, I, I, I shudder sometimes to think, it ain't no wonder Paul said, I fear lest I'd be a castaway. It's really something to think that he's got an eraser on the other side of that pen. That he can blot your name out of the book of life. Somebody said, well, once it's there, it's there, brother. That's not true. There's going to be a few blots there. Are you listening to me? I don't want you to be lost. I don't want to be lost myself. But I most certainly don't want to go down last road deceiving myself and the people and wind up in the end lost. Say Amen. I certainly don't want to have, and I'm preaching and I'm saying some things that I know that's cutting way down deep, but I certainly don't want to live a haphazard religious Christian type of a life and come down to the very end and find out that I've not set an example for my children and they're going to hell. Say amen. I don't want them to be lost. I don't want Michael Paul to be lost. I don't want J-Boy to be lost. I'd rather him ride that wheelchair every day of his life and never take a step and make it to heaven than to get up out of that wheelchair and get out here in the streets and get on drugs. 
say what you want to about me. Think anything you want to think about me. But I'd rather he stay in that wheelchair and never take a step as to get out of here and some old homosexual spirit get hold of him. And hide behind religion to commit his acts of sin. To think he's getting by. Let me tell you something. It's not, it, it, it would be, it, it's you that's the loser. It's you that's the loser. Because, my friend, what an awful thing. What an awful thing for people to think that you live right at the foot of the cross and then get to heaven or get to the judgment and the real you is exposed. God, who am I preaching to? I feel the anointing, Brother Jeff Brewer, that I felt 10 years ago when I started. I'm starting to recognize spirits that, that I used to think were very religious. I used to think they were very godly, but I'm beginning to recognize spirits that ain't so very religious. It's you, Brother Cook. I found out a long time ago that everything that talks in tongues ain't got the Holy Ghost. I found out a long time ago that everything that shouts don't have the Spirit. Say amen. They may make fun of some of you all for the life that you live and the way you, the, the way you walk before God. But let me tell you something. I'll tell you one thing. Let some of the Hollywood Jezebels, let the Nashville Jezebels that stands up and know oh, how they feel they're Jesus. It don't matter what preacher gets them on television. When you get saved, you come out of sin. God Almighty, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. When you get saved, you come out of sin. It don't matter. I want to ask you something. I want to ask you something. I want you to listen closely to me. What standard would you rather measure up to? The standard that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Martha, oh, Martha, holy women. What about, what about, what about the little prophetess? What about Dorcas? You listen to me? What about Ruth? Let the world say what they want to about you, girls. But do what God said to do. Live like God said to live. And if they call you an old fogey, let them call you an old fogey. But when you stand on that judgment and there's the holy women of old like Martha and Mary and Mary Magdalene and the prophetesses of the Old Testament and the New Testament, do you listen to me? It'll make you feel good to know that you come close to their standard and you'll hear God's voice. Say amen, thou good and faithful servant. Say amen, somebody. I want you to know I'm not saying that you can put on a long dress and make it to heaven. You've got to have your heart right but I'm telling you this that you can't live like this world wants you to live it don't matter how many churches you belong to you've got to be born again and you've got to be changed in your life and you've got to be changed in your mind say amen I know I've lost a lot of people that are going other churches over around where I live, over around home there. Lost a lot of them a few miles down and up the road because they said, Brother West, just bleeds it too strict. I've had them come and sit in my house. I've had women come and sit in my house and look at Marsh and tell her, say, I, I, we, we think you ought to dress Holy, and we think you ought to do this, and we think you ought to do that, and them sitting there looking like Jezebel. She said, well, what about you? She said, well, I'm not a preacher's wife. Honey, ain't one standard for a preacher's wife and another standard for another one. Praise God, there's just one standard to get to the kingdom of heaven. You've got to be born again. And when you get born again, you take on a new nature. You don't want the things of this world anymore. You want to do everything that will please Jesus. Say amen, somebody. You want to sit right there at his feet. You want to wash his feet with your tears and dry his feet with your hair. You want to praise him. You may look quick turn uh, turning old dirty jokes uh, and you'll start praising God. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Because as you get born again, changed in your life.
cry loud. Fair enough. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people of the sin, he said. You think that I'd want to preach to you for years and wind up in the judgment and see you without the capacity to be saved? My blood feels like it's running cold. There's a pair of scales out before my eyes. When you step on them, can you measure up? There won't be very many people go to heaven that people sit back and, 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 and became a stumbling block. Are you, how many know what a stumbling block is? There's too many people saying, well, if, if they're saved, I'm saved. Those people that cause people to say that are stumbling blocks. Now, wait a minute. Only if they are accused falsely do they have a loophole. If they are rightfully causing stum people to stumble, if they are in their ways causing them to stumble, then God will hold them accountable. Say amen. There's a lot on my shoulders. There's a heavy load on my shoulders. There's a heavy load on my life. I've got 40,000 families there about following our ministry. Woe is me if I fail to preach the gospel. You think I want to stand somewhere on a little old religious pedestal and watch my people slip off into hell? No, sir, brother. I'll stand. I'll, I'll shove them back. I'll fight them back. I'll do anything I can to keep them away from the destructive flames of darkness and hell. I don't want to see anybody doomed. A man that's got his conscience seared Nothing's a sin. He can do anything he wants to and still go to church and do anything he wants to out here in this world is doomed. Oh, God, I'm getting a cold wave. Did you know one time God gave Jezebel an altar call? Did you know one time God told Jezebel he, he gave her a space to repent and she wouldn't repent? I've said a lot of things tonight. You can get up and walk out of this building and walk out. You'll either walk out. I believe I heard Brother Cook say as I was coming in, in this evening. I believe I heard him say something about being sealed. Boy, I'd rather be sealed than doomed. Wouldn't you? What do you mean, Brother West, doomed? There comes a place when God said... I believe it's the first chapter of Proverbs. God said, because you love not the truth, God said he would mock you. When your fear comes upon you, he would laugh at your calamity. Say amen. Believe me, my friend, this world is headed for calamities. Believe me, we are headed for things that... You know, I, this world, this world's crazy. I tell you, millions of people's minds are perverted. Have you heard where the planets are lining up? Are you folks listening to me? Have you read in the news and heard in the news where the planets are, are lining up? And some of these crazy, filthy-minded people in this world are getting ready to have their doomsday parties, their last day's parties. The planets are going to line up. The earth's going to shake all the pieces. They think we're going to have one more blowout before it's over. Jesus said, except I shorten the day, days there'll be no flesh saved. saved.